be working on this cannonette. This is the one that I got recently and it has an advanced issue to where, oh no, it just doesn't do anything. Cool. So first what we're going to do, I already took out the front glass elements and if you your viewers recall the guy that I bought it from had said it was impossible but he didn't have one of these I guess so I just used this and was able to I had to put it back in and then I was able to take it out but yeah, that doesn't really matter too much point is got it out so that's cool I have another one here that I will definitely need to take out because as you can see the glass elements are pretty bad so when I do that, I'll actually record me doing that so you have an idea of how to do it. Well, first I'm gonna take the top off. So I'm just gonna do that real quick. And then we will do a little experimentation because I have, have this 99.9% uh, .9 like alcohol and word on the street is that that will help take the skin off of these because as I mentioned in my review video the leatherette that is used is either very thin or the adhesive that they use on these is just really corrosive or something and like made the skin incredibly thin I don't know what the case is you know the chicken or the egg first or bad glue or bad skin. All I know is that the skin is, in my mind, famously difficult to get off. So I'm hoping that the alcohol seeps through and takes care of the adhesive a little bit. Top came off without too much of an issue, which is always a good sign. We have this. Put some in here. And it smells really fun. Look at that. Uh -oh. I was able to get it all pulled off and there's no obvious signs of like distress. Uh, there was a little bit of a tear, just a little bit of a tear. Might replace it with the other Canonets leatherette. Or I have a bunch of other leatherette. I might dye that and replace this entirely and just get a custom look. I don't know yet. But I do have to say for the first attempt at getting the skin off, the alcohol did work pretty well. I was talking with a guy on the internet who spent a lot of time, a lot of his time repairing Canonets, And I was just like, hey, what do you use to get the skin off? And he did the typical camera repair answer of like, uh, can't tell ya. I'm like, dude, come on. Like, <laughs> we're all in this together. <laughs> You're like, help me out. And he's like, have you tried heat? And I was like, yeah, let me just get fucking lighter and pull it up to this leather. That'd be really smart. Cause you don't actually have to pull all of the skin off necessarily. You're just trying to get to these screws. And then you're also gonna have to chisel this off. 
but there's two screws here and there's two screws here. And then it's these metal plates that you're just trying to get off. And technically for this repair, I think I only need to get this side off. Yeah. Yeah, so screw it. I'm not even gonna mess with this if I don't have to. So I'm just gonna get this off and then uh, access here and keep going. <laughs> All right. Easy peasy. As you can tell, I uh, removed the other, gee, many Christmas. I removed the other metal piece here. There's just two screws right there. Had a little bit of a tougher time getting the skin off of this side. Don't know why that is, but anyway, doesn't matter because we're here now. And basically what I'm gonna be doing is lubricating this arm that sits underneath the lens here because that's not, it's not advancing this portion properly and then it's not allowing it to drop down enough to engage the shutter mechanism, I think. I know what's happening, I don't know the exact technical points. The other thing I wanted to illustrate from this position, it's very important, you can remove the whole lens from this point. So how do you do that, you might be asking. There are four screws. So I can get a, there is a screw right here. There's a screw right in there. These are black screws right there. Let's see if I can focus right there. And then there's one. It's very hard to get to down here. You have to kind of, kind of advance it. And then you can get to it right there. So. The other thing you have to do is unscrew these two right here, and then this whole mechanism will basically just lift out of here. I'm not gonna do it because I don't need to for this repair, but I will probably be doing it for the other Canonet because, if you will bear with me for one moment, um, this thing is a train wreck. You need to pull out the lens, so that way you can get to basically where the power cord runs, because it power cable runs right back here. So I'm gonna have to rewire this whole thing because it's corroded in the bottom. It's probably corroded here. Just reconnect a wire. But anyway, cross that bridge when we get to it. I just wanted to point out that that's where we're at currently right here. Um, it will work every now and again, but what is happening is it's not returning Fully. So if I send it back with enough force, it'll fire. Let me see if I can get this a little more open for you, so that way you can see what I'm talking about. So it's a little bit more consistent, but we're still seeing a little bit of tension on the return. So I'm just gonna kinda keep working on that, keep oiling it up. But really what we're looking at for that is this piece right here. There's a little thing that sticks up that catches on the arm. And then there's a little part that points down into this. And then there's this little knob right there that goes into this advancing arm thing. This was preventing it this little knob thing was preventing this from traveling all the way back so it wasn't properly engaging that's pretty much that fix it's a really it's an easy thing it looks very complicated and it doesn't help that i have the lens kind of pulled off of here um, the issues primarily have always been getting the skin off because like previously any any slight amount of tension on this and you start seeing like little stress marks from pulling at it or you just end up tearing it. Like I, even right here, I tore it a little bit. For the most part, that's kind of 
this repair. It's a very common issue, unfortunately, because this is like a soft metal piece, so it does kind of experience some deformities. And then also it's just good to know how to get to this component as well. I have successfully swapped the lenses on Canonets before. So for instance, if the blades on this one were like rusted shut, you know, and they weren't going to open or, um, or much more likely to happen is something like this thin metal set piece was like busted somehow or the, uh, this little marker thing was like, looked really terrible, something like that, like to where you can't really get it off. I could take the lens off of this, unsolder all the electrical components and just do a little swap. So it's a lot more difficult than something like, you know, swapping a lens on an ME Super where you just have to press the lens release button. This is a little bit more involved. All right, I'm not sure if I'd mentioned this previously, so we'll just go over this really quickly. Uh, this thing right here, it's the CDS cell basically, so this is the metering system. And now when you have something like this in this state, what I always like to do is check, just double, triple check to make sure that the power works before I start putting it back together because there's nothing worse than thinking you're done with something and then having to take it apart again to fix something else. So just want to double check my bases here. So got a battery in there. And then what I do from here is just take a screwdriver and make sure that the light is working there. Good enough. And then the other thing too, set it on A for auto there and then just A shutter speed. Um, and then something you want to keep in mind, normally there's something like this sitting in front of it that kind of blocks out how much light goes in. It's receiving a lot more light than it should. You can see that the needle there moves. And when it moves, then it'll fire because this will crimp down where it needs to and allow it to fire. So that's basically what it is. And yeah, I guess since we're at this point, I just kind of like to do a deep clean of all the different things, make sure that there's lubrication where there needs to be lubrication, just kind of basic stuff like that, but just making sure that the blades are clean, everything is kind of in serviceable condition, everything moves properly. All that good stuff. So yeah, but for right now, I believe this is pretty much done. So I think I'm gonna throw it together and kind of clean off my desk here a little bit and get back to working on some other stuff. So that was kind of the Canonet QL17 advance repair. That is all, thank you for watching. And uh, let me know if you wanna see more repair videos like this, cause they're kind of hard to do a lot of kind of jabbering and I don't really, like I said many times before and I will continue to say, I don't have like the proper verbiage for all of these parts and pieces, but I'm happy to give it my best go if uh, people like watching it. So thank you very much and uh, catch you on the next one.